before we go to the next question, I, I, I had to pull this up because you, oh, of course, yeah. you got me just thinking so much here about the comments. Because this, this like, the, like was just crazy. Because I always mm -hmm. wanted, I always want to blow things out of the water. I looked it up, and it says the eight greatest comments that visit us and their next flyby. Okay. Oh, I'd love to hear this. Yes. So the first comment is Haley's comment. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the one that I was thinking, but you were thinking okay. something different. You were yeah, thinking that's... of Haley Bop. Mm-hmm. I was thinking of Haley's Comet. Haley's Comet came around in 1986. Its next flyby will be in 2061. Wow. Ron will be 724. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No. So, so 2061 is the next one. Haley Bop is the one that you were thinking of, and I knew it was 1997 because I remember that one. Because mm -hmm. that was like in the news and everything. And all the crazy cults and all that stuff. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. it's, it's next flyby. <laughs> This this is crazy. I don't know how they can even figure this one out. Is four thousand three hundred and eighty five? <sighs> That's when it's gonna so fly we, by next. Yeah, so we, we won't be here. No, At least not this. Ron not will. this incarnation of our person. We won't be here. Ron will be here. Ron, Ron will actually see it. He will actually be here for the entire comment, and he will actually post it on Instagram. Oh no, gosh. Lovejoy. Lovejoy was in two thousand and eleven. Mm -hmm. It's next flyby is in 2,633. So, 580 years from now. Okay. Just just a oh. little. Well, yeah. Oh, my. And then the one that I was talking about, Hayu Kotaki, mm -hmm. was in 1996. And I think a lot of people were talking about that in the chat room. It was in 1996. It's next flyby. And, of course, this is a range. And this is a big effing range. 72,000 to 116,000. That's the year. The year, 116,000. Why such a big range for that one? They Why don't can't know. They, s they don't okay. know. That's the problem. Because they just discovered it. Oh, that makes sense. So okay. they, they, they have no idea. And I, I, I they will never know. Mm -hmm. They says astronomers have calculated its orbit and believe it was here about 8,000 years ago. And its orbit will not bring it near sun for about another 14,000 years. Mm -hmm. oh, the, the spacecraft Ulysses accidentally passed through the Hayukataki trail in May of 1996 and recorded it at at least 570 million kilometers an hour. Oh. Which means twice as long as any other known comet in history. Oh my gosh. Oh, but it gets better. Okay, it, it do gets, tell. There's a <laughs> com there's a comet called West. Mm-hmm. It's last five Kanye four, West? It's just no, not Kanye West. No. It just <laughs> okay. just says West. I don't know. And it says it was it was in nineteen seventy six. Mm-hmm. I was negative eight that year. Or negative seven. <laughs> so I wasn't even born. It's next flyby? Oh, just the year two hundred and fifty six thousand. Oh my gosh. Where do they come up with this? I mean, seriously. How would you know that it's going to come around in 256,000? How? How? Yeah. Yeah. The next one yeah. is Akia Seki. I-K-E-Y-A hyphen S-E-K-I. Its last flyby was in 1965, and the year that it's going to be coming back is the year 3000. <laughs> Very interesting. 3000. 3000. And then there's the one called Erend Roland, mm -hmm. A-R-E-N-D hyphen R-O-L-A-N-D. Last, last flyby was was the year Ron was born, 1957. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Ron, we're, Ron, we're just kidding. We're just we're just messing with you. 1957. Its next flyby is never. So oh my gosh! It'll never so come this, back. So it left our solar. It was. So was it just like a fly through, like a passerby through our, our solar system? Yeah, like, it, or it yeah, was destroyed. It's, it's called a non-periodic comet, which means it just goes through and has its own its, its own way. Okay. Comets have orbits, and they always come back at a certain time, whether it's five years, thirty years, or or five hundred thousand years. This one is just called a non-periodic comet. And then the one that I know was Comet mm -hmm. McNaught was in two thousand and seven. Okay. And next flyby is ninety-five thousand years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Crazy. I just figured I'd tell you that because you were so, so interested, intrigued. Yeah. 
about... No, I'm glad you did. Like, I'm, I'm really glad you did. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, I'm... And do you want to start showing some of the images from the... Are you are you going to save that for later? I'm hoping um, it doesn't... Next... I'm hoping it doesn't lag the chat. Okay. So, if we can try, or should I just... Ask your next... With... Ask, yeah, ask your next question. Okay, well, my next question is kind of simple, but, I mean, maybe, uh, like, maybe it is, maybe it's not. Um, what is the closest object that we can see with the naked... I mean, other than our own sun and moon, of course, but, <laughs> and our planets. Yeah. What is the closest... Uh, oh, are you okay with that? I dropped my phone. I'm okay, I'm okay. Yep. Okay. <laughs> what is the closest object that we can see outside of our solar system and with the naked eye? And what is the furthest, most distant um, object that we can see with the naked eye? Mm. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> wow. The closest object that you could see with your naked eye. Well, I'm sure James Dugan can take this one because I'm, I, I'm, he's, he's actually on right now. And mm -hmm. we can't see it, but he can. And that's Alpha Centauri. Oh. Alpha Centauri is a binary star that is that lies roughly between four to five light years away from Earth. Mm -hmm. Which, in comparison to other objects in the sky, Alpha Centauri is extremely close. And you can see with your naked eye, which is very interesting. Chris Astro so Channels or Astro Live Channel says Sirius or Sirius. Si Sirius oh. lies 8.58 light years away. That's probably the closest that we can see in the Northern Hemisphere. But if you go to the Southern Hemisphere, Alpha Centauri would definitely be the closest. Now, objects? Hmm. Now, naked eye, of course, there's not many objects that you can see with your naked eye. I mean, you, you could technically see, in, in a dark sky site, nonetheless, you could mm -hmm. see... Andromeda Galaxy with your naked eye. Mm -hmm. That's the furthest you can see with a lot of stuff, because Andromeda Galaxy is like two and a half million light years away. But you can see with your naked eye. Okay. But of so course, we... you've got to be dark dark sky. So speaking of dark sky, you mentioned that James would be able to see it. Is be Does he live somewhere where there's a dark sky, or is he somewhere in a different hemisphere? Yeah, like... he, he lives in Australia. Oh, okay. There we See, yeah, there so we go. Southern Hemisphere can see Alpha Centauri, and we cannot. Okay. So that's why he can see stuff. And, he, of course, he can see the Tarantula Nebula. He mm -hmm. can see the Large Magellanic Cloud, the Small Magellanic Cloud. So there's a lot of things that he can see that we can't. And what's really cool, this is really awesome, and I did this for, as an example for one time on one of my streams, the sky rotates in the opposite direction procession of the of the um where the actual the celestial pole and you know yep. how the how the sky goes around polaris mm -hmm. their southern celestial pole the sky rotates the opposite direction it rotates clockwise instead of counterclockwise isn't the same thing with the moon like when we see waning and the wax like the like if we see a crescent moon that's to the left they see it to the right is this true I, like there's the I've never been to Australia. My okay. guess is I think so, but I'm pretty okay. sure. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure Mr. Dugan can answer that question in the chat. Yeah. I can guarantee it because he is really good with that. Because he's answered a few questions of mine when I've asked it. Like right now, in Australia, it is mm -hmm. 1:44 p.m. there, so it is lunchtime. Happy lunchtime, James. So, I'm curious. Wait, did we lose you? No, I'm still Person? here. I'm still oh, okay, here. I thought you go. Okay. So I'm just curious. I know you're not a flat earther, but I'm just curious how flat earthers, uh, how they explain the moon, um, and as far as like the the southern and northern hemisphere, like why different people in different hemispheres can see different constellations. I'm just curious what the flat earthers' explanation for that is. If if you've heard any, how they explain that. It's a tough one. Because, I mean, some of the things, I'm not a flat earther, but some of the reasons they give, I'm like, oh, okay, that's... But then some things they don't even ever touch or cover. So I'm just kind of curious, like, how they explain that one, but... Yeah, I mean... They, they, I guess... Well, they have a lot of, you know, data 
that they that they use or a lot of like you know I don't believe it I mean in my opinion but again it's one of those things that if somebody comes on a stream and, and it always there's always a flat earth de debate channel mm -hmm. and there's like 18,000 people on it yeah like I have no idea why there's that many people and they go into detail I, I can't spend more than 30 seconds on it I can't I just can't do it yeah so I have no idea I mean I know that the the earth is round can I prove it? No, because I've never been outside of Earth, so I have to rely on other people to tell me. Mm -hmm. I mean, is is I mean, is is it flat? I doubt it. But again, that's where they they go and they prove it. I can't because I've yeah. ne I've never left you know past Washington, mm -hmm. so I've never really, I never went across the globe, so I really don't know. <sighs> Yeah. No, like, I've, I've seen some of the videos, like, I listened to the argument, you know, just to kind of, okay, what are you justifying? What are you basing this on? I understand not trusting everything NASA or the government. Like, okay, I totally get that. But some of the things that they come up with, are, I don't know, like, they're like, oh, well, how does a, a jet flyer, you know, go in a straight line and he never has to adjust, you know, um, the the airplane do you know what i mean do you know mm -hmm. what I'm like i've just seen like oh like like oh why they have all these theories for stuff and they have these like you know things like oh or they put the the balloon the camera and the balloon yes. and it goes up yeah yep yeah so you know just just curious but okay you don't have to spend too much time on the no. flat earthers so yeah well, <laughs> it's just like and you, I don't know what a lot of people, you know, they make fun of them and, and, they, and they call them out and they, they do a bunch of stuff. And, hey, if you believe in something, it may not be right. But then again, we may not be right. Okay, while we're waiting for the people to uh, think of some questions, um, do you have any theories? You, you remember when the solar observatory got mysteriously got shut down and yes. the town was evacuated? or um, Have you heard anything any more theories about i know it's been a while like it's kind of dead, dead old news now but have you heard any or anything about it or have any theories about what happened or what they saw no actually we haven't heard anything in probably three months okay you know it would it happened in early september mm -hmm. so i mean it's one of those things that it just they covered it up and i yeah. and i know justin's gonna have say something to say about it uh I know that, you know, there's a bunch of people on here that are going to say something about it that I think it was a cover-up. And I know that it was a cover-up. I'm, I'm pretty darn sure it was. That something happened they did, did not want to see or tell somebody. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, Venus and Charles have questions. Yay! Um, I don't know if you want to... Do you want to pick which one you want to take first? I know you're probably going to answer both. Um... I can I can pretty much answer as as much as I can. Okay, uh, Venus wants to because I'm going to take Venus's question first because the eclipse is tomorrow. Yes, it is. Venus would like to know why the moon uh, turns reddish um, for a blood moon. So the blood moon, the reason why it turns red is because it's the shadow. Mm -hmm. So in other words, like if you were to take a light and cover half of it it would change color a little bit. You would notice that it changes like a brownish. And mm -hmm. it's the same thing with the moon is that it turns a blood red before it actually starts to go back. Because you're going to notice the shadow is going to come in first and then it's going to turn red and then it's going to turn into a shadow and then it's going to go away. So that's my hypothesis of why it turns red. I'm sure the real reason... I'm actually, I'm actually in the process of looking it up. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> it's a good question. It is, yeah. Why did the cow jump over the moon? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oops, I'm sorry. Because the dish yeah. ran away with the spoon. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> sometimes an eclipse moon is called the blood moon because of the rusty color. But why? Why, oh, why does the moon turn red and not simply darken to black when it goes into the shadow? As NASA explains it, it's because the Earth's atmosphere extends beyond the planet and sunlight passes through it 
still reaching the moon. There you go. Excellent. So, there, so there's your answer. Same. Okay. Oh, a uh, question just popped up. Uh, Astro Live Channel asks, what is your favorite planet? Hmm. The sun. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. No, my, my favorite planet was the first planet that I ever saw, and that was Saturn, by far. Okay. I'm sure a lot of people are going to say that, too. But honestly, if I had a chance to actually image it, it mm -hmm. would be Pluto. Yeah. I, honestly, if, if I had the capability of what NASA did with the New Horizons mission and actually got Pluto, mm -hmm. that would be incredible. And we all know that we, we thought Pluto was just a barren wasteland. Mm -hmm. And it's not. Yeah, the images of it are beautiful. And like... there's, there's active volcanoes on Pluto. Mm -hmm. That's crazy to even think about that. I mean, how is that even possible? Yeah. So, yeah, I would, I would definitely have to say that Pluto would be really cool. But then again, if I take an image of Pluto, like say, for instance, the next clear night and I go out and try to get Pluto, it's going to be a freaking dot. Mm -hmm. There's not going to be real much, so you really can't do much with it. So, what's your favorite planet? Oh, um... I've always liked Jupiter, but, um... I know it's maybe not be one of the popular ones, but... Is it Neptune that has the ring that goes no. across, like... No. It doesn't, it doesn't have an icy one? It says, no. I thought, which of the... Okay, which of the ice giants has the ring, like the very thin ring that goes, instead of going around the equator or mm. around the, the, it goes. Insert, um, insert joke here. Oh God, oh no. <laughs> yep. That's the no, one. But... Yes, that's the one that has the rings that go vertical instead of horizontal. Okay, okay, yeah. I don't know, there's something just about the color. I've always been very just captured by it even though it's not one of the more popular ones but for me for something about just always... well people I mean. say uranus but other people say uranus uranus, uranus. I've, I don't know. I've heard that yeah, yeah i've heard of uranus i've heard it's because it's a, kind of supposed to sound like your honor you're on it but okay yeah there's all all kinds of things oh trust me there is yeah <laughs> if you which oh i have a question yes okay uh, while we're um since they're going, you know, all this talk about going to Mars and uh, terraforming Mars, mm -hmm. which is further away, more difficult and more expensive, why do you think they haven't made more effort to make, say, te test bases on the moon? Like, just to kind of, like, practice before you go to the next step to go even further away to be even more ambitious? Why not try... A little bit closer to make sure you really know what you're doing because i think they're going to try to get it right and I, they're going to you know it's kind of like that cut cut once or measure twice cut once yeah so i, I think that they're, they're honestly if, if they can get it right the first time why mm -hmm. not do it right the first time instead of waiting okay you know that that's just my opinion i mean i wouldn't I, you know yeah they, they could go to the moon and they could colonize mm -hmm. on the moon but how good mm -hmm. is that really going to get you you know, with, okay. with with the sun heating up, and it's going to start swelling, and it's going to get hotter, and it's going to get more ridiculous, mm -hmm. why not go as far as you can, within reason, of course. Yeah. Well, that but, makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. No, it's perfect since I'm going to make sure I didn't miss any questions. Um, Okay, ask us if we want to hear a funny joke. So, um... Oh, I, I got a funny joke. Oh, dear. Oh, okay. I do. Trust me, I'm a man of many trades. I got a funny joke. It, it, this, this is this is going to be a good one, okay? I, I got to get myself ready. I got I to get my comedy mode in, okay? Mm -hmm. Can you hear a pterodactyl go to the bathroom? <laughs> Can you hear? Uh, is this a trick question? It is I'm not. Gonna... It is not a trick question. Well, um, I don't know how you would find out because, but I'm just going to go ahead and say no. I'm just going to say Be no. Because the P is silent. Oh my God. Drum roll. Got it. Oh my God. It's true. 
<laughs> That's so funny. It's true. It's the pee is silent, so you can't you can't hear it go to the bathroom. So that's this a good is joke. True. Oh, that's you know what Venus asks a very good question. Uh, so why does Venus um, spin to the left? Why does it spin in the opposite direction of the rest of the planets? Probably because, in my opinion, I'm not going to look this up. I'm not, I'm not going to do anything. But in my opinion. I think it was hit by an asteroid. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. And it, I think it makes perfect sense. It's because if it was hit by an asteroid, it actually spun the other way, which means it was spinning the other way slowly because it never caught up to actually spin super fast. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. I don't know what the real answer would be. While you're looking that up, there's a theory uh, about Venus being a captured comet because they're saying that there's reports from like ancient uh, like lore or something that Venus being the morning star that it wasn't always there mm -hmm. and that Venus has some kind of weird trail like if you um, when you look at it in certain imaging like uh, infrared I don't know something however they do whatever they do that apparently Venus has a weird trail around it like this hazy weird long oblong like a uh, haze around it yeah uh, it's yeah so there's a theory that um venus is actually a captured object that it was not always there that that's just a theory so that could explain why it's spinning in the wrong direction so when you whatever you're looking up like yeah. i don't know if, if you can find that theory but i i've heard that theory before mike yeah well i'm also looking it up and because my reading here it says that it's the earth the sun's pole the gravitational pole is making it go the opposite direction which is odd because venus spins backwards but why does it mercury spin backwards when it's even yeah. closer so i don't I, I don't i don't know i'm sure cosmic lettuce would know i mean he he knows a lot about astronomy and a lot about certain things i know he came on now jeff lucas says it's jupiter that swung by that's a good you want to know what? That's that's a good theory. They said that the outer planets actually started in the inner rings, like the actual like rocky planets, mm. like Jupiter and Saturn. They were all close up and then pushed mm -hmm. their way out. So that it, it, that's possible. Yeah. I, I I don't know. It, these are great questions. Boy oh boy. Yeah. You know who would possibly know? Mark D'Antonio. I'm sure he would know a lot. That's why, I, that part of the reason why I'm on tonight instead of tomorrow night is because, one, the eclipse is tomorrow, and two, I'm going to do... Segway! Well, bam! Mark D'Antonio Sky Tour Live Radio is going to be on KGRA tomorrow from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time. I think, that, I, I think that got it just right. Move that out of the way. I think that sounds about right. 8 to 10. That's part of the reason, because they're going to be live, I think. I think they're actually going to be doing a live show. Okay, um, Chris, uh, Yeah, I'm reading um, it too. He says that you're right. Okay. Now, that's interesting. So, it does have a magnetic tail. So, it does actually... Sh they could probably image it. Now, we can't from Earth, but I'm sure that they got it. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Now we can go to the next segment and still ask questions, people. I, I, I love questions. 